So, simplifying. Who can help us with? Yeah, you are going to combine like terms. Caitlin, do you want to help us with this one? What do you do first? Yep, number one. Now, before we distribute, can we combine the 4x and the 3y? No, they're not like terms. So first we distribute, and what did you get? Thumbs up if you agree with the plus 6y instead of minus 6y. Why is she saying plus 6y? A negative times a negative is going to be that positive, so plus 6y. All right, we're, that's right, we're rolling now. We're going to distribute the 3. We have the 12y and the minus 15x. Which of these things can be combined? And what does that combine to? Okay, you're thinking of an equation. If we had like an equal sign, if we had an equal sign and we wanted to get rid of a 12y on one side, or if there was an equal sign here, yeah, all we're doing is simplifying. So 6 of these plus 12 of these is 18 of these. Yeah. All right, and now we have the x's to simplify. We have 8 negatives and we have 15 negatives. Oops, not equals. 23, yeah, sorry. So check your answer. Are there any questions? Most of the mistakes here, I'll give you a second please. Most of the mistakes actually, not just with this problem, with the fundamental essential problems, with all the problems, deal with negatives and positives. A lot of people are mixing up negatives and positives. So you could easily know all the algebra there is to know about this problem and still get it wrong if you don't add and subtract negative and positive numbers correctly. If we have a minus eight and we're minusing more, we're going to go even further into the negatives. We're going to go 23 into the negatives. All right, short answer. Sean is driving from Chicago to East Lansing, Michigan. Right now, he's stopped in Gary. The function for his total distance traveled as a function, function of time since he left is d equals 67t plus 25. Explain what 67 means in the function rule. Sedan? <laughs> Say that again? <coughs> okay, the distance in a certain amount of time. So a rate. So 67 is the rate. Or we can just call it the speed. What does the 25 represent here? Nope, 67 represents the speed or the rate. What is the 25? We gotta actually look at the situation here. Reese? 25 is that, this start number. So if we're talking about the total distance traveled, it's probably how far he went from Chicago to East Lansing is the 25. So for number three, Joe, why don't you rotate your desk so you can see it better? And Zamora, grab a seat in your, in your group so you can see it. Here we have a problem where they're ref Here we have a problem where they're referring to a rectangle, but there is no rectangle. What would probably be a good thing to do? Draw a rectangle. There, there could very well be problems like this on the exam where they refer to something and it's not there. 
So here we got to draw a rectangle. One side of the rectangle is 5x plus 3. And the other side of the rectangle is 6x minus 5. The perimeter of the rectangle is 84. And we want to find the, rec the area of the rectangle. Yeah. So basically, we need to figure out what these two lengths are. If it were a square, right. then I would agree. But in this case, this side might be a different length than this side. It's not a square, but we know that the, um, the other side, the opposite side, the corresponding side, would be the same length as that side. Okay, so thi wh what Larissa just said is a really important point about this problem. And that is that rectangles, the opposite sides are the same, are congruent. So if one side's 5x plus 3, the opposite side is going to be 5x plus 3. If the other side's 6x minus 5, the opposite side is going to be 6x minus 5. Now keep in mind, we know what the perimeter is. We have to think about what does that mean? What does the perimeter of a rectangle mean? The outside what? The, yeah, the total length of the outside. It's all added up. If we take, take a look at the screen. This is going to be a visual thing here. This distance plus this distance plus this distance plus this distance, that's the perimeter. What should all of those added up equal to? 84. That's what the perimeter is. This plus this plus this plus this, that outside length should add up to 84. Can someone give me an equation? Okay, Larissa. That's this distance. Right. One down, three to go. Uh, I don't know. All I know is equal to 84. <laughs> well, yeah. And what equal? Does one side equal 84? No, all four. All four. So that's one side. What's the next side? Um, plus 5x plus 3. Plus 6x minus 5. Plus 6x minus 5. Plus 6x minus 5. Minus five. Equals, 84. equals 84. That's the equation. Okay, and this is where the simplifying comes in into play. But before we do that, take a look. Thumbs up if you understand this equation. Here, we, we really need to focus here. We really got to focus here. So take a look at the screen, and let's make sure we're focused here. Thumbs up if this equation makes sense to you. You're going to have to do problems like this. You, if, this if, if you get it, future problems like this will be easy. If you don't get it and you choose not to get it right now, you're not going to be able to do this. What, what we discussed was the perimeter equals the distance around. What Larissa did was add up the four lengths, the distance around, set it equal to 84, because that's the perimeter. Deja. Thumbs up if you see where Dej is coming up with that. Are these different? You're going to get the exact same thing, right? The way that Larissa said, there, there are two of them, right? Two times this is the same as this plus this. Two times this, so it's a different way of looking at it. And if we pick this one or we pick this one, this one we're going to distribute. This one we're going to have more like terms to combine. Okay, you're going to get the same thing. It do, well, it does look more simplified a little bit, yeah. Now, either way, though, you're going to have to distribute or you're going to have to combine like terms to actually figure out what x is. Which is what? Well, but it's just a 3. And that's what we would get if by adding 5x and 5x and 3 and 3. 10x and 6. All right. So we've got 10x plus 6 
plus 12x minus 10 equals 84. Uh, we can again we've got more like terms to combine 22x minus 4 equals 84 22x equals 80 oh, actually we got a plus 4 sorry no it's not I we got to add 4 to each side What, what question is there about this? This, this, is, this is a good problem because it involves a lot of different things. It involves your understanding of the idea of perimeter. It involves your understanding of some properties of a rectangle that opposite sides are congruent. It's got some solving and combining and distributing in there. Once you find x, are we even done yet? Never. No. We've got to actually find the area of the rectangle, so we're not even done yet. All right, let's plug it in. So if we know what x is for, let's plug it in. So what is that going to be? So that's 23. If we plug it into here, and now how do we find the area of a rectangle? Four thirty. Yeah. Any questions about this one? All right. Finally, multiple choice. All right. Which of the following lines is perpendicular? Okay. If we were to graph this, I'm going to make a rough sketch. The point here, the point, the, the point here, I know. I'm just going to risk it. The point, the point here is going to be negative 9, comma 3. Raise your hand if you see why the point is negative 9, comma 3. Hold up. I, I, I will get there in a second. I just want to say, I just want you to raise your hand if you know why a point on this line is negative 9, comma 3. Talk to your group. Why is the point negative 9, comma 3? and we want it to be perpendicular. Perpendicular means that they form at a right angle, where they form at a 90 degree angle. That's what perpendicular means. If our line was at a negative slope, it's not going to get at that crossing like that. In fact, it needs to be at a positive slope. So which ones could we immediately eliminate? B and C. Wait, B? A and C. A and C both have negative slopes. They're both going to be going down like this. Oh, yeah. We need one that goes up. We need a positive slope. But, uh, now, which one is the question? But we have um, a y-intercept of negative 2. Exactly. So I think we'll be A. Well, it turns out that if we want it to be perpendicular, the the y-intercept actually doesn't matter. Because take a look. This line's perpendicular, but so is this line. 
and so is this line. It could be really high up, really high down. The slope is what matters for perpendicular, not the y-intercept, because I can move this up or down. We actually need to take what we call the, if I can get my computer back up, the opposite reciprocal of the slope. 